everybody. Well, um, good afternoon. I think it's already afternoon there in, in India and the Philippines. Rajan is in the process of joining us. Elizabeth, we seem to have you twice. Um, or an, I'm not sure what, no, maybe not. I'm not quite sure what the, the sixth empty box here is, but hopefully Rajan will join us shortly. He was backstage a moment ago. So welcome everybody who's, uh, who's joining this session. Uh, my name's Paul Woodward. I run a consultant business, Paul Woodward Advisory, um, also BSG in Hong Kong. And uh, as many of you may be aware, I'm a former managing director of UFI, the Global Association of the Exhibitions Industry. I'm also currently serving as guest editor of Exhibition World magazine. Um, up here on the stage, uh, we currently have five of our six speakers i'll go we, we we have a mix here of organizers of of contractors consultants to the industry and associations ah rajan good good afternoon thank you very much for joining us i'm just kicking off with the introductions here um so we have an an, an association we have a uh, elizabeth nihos from um, from aiella the international exhibition logistics association elizabeth welcome and uh, then let's see, going going round certainly the way that you're all organised in my screen. I don't know if it's the same in everybody else's. We have we'll we'll go across to Manila and to uh, Joel Pasquale, who's uh, an an, an organiser based in Manila and also currently the president of the of PASIOS, the Philippines Association of the Exhibition and Convention Industry. So uh, and. Um, Next again on my screen, a, f a face I'm sure familiar to many of you in India, Vipal Agarwal. You're, you are a, an, an, an event contractor. You, your company is a long established company um, built doing the construction and building for events. Another good friend and, and, and familiar face on and, and my screen there, Rajan Sharma. Nice to see you, Rajan. Uh, a long established organizer in India with many international partnerships and a long track record of, of, of organizing top quality international events in India. And finally, on my screen, coming back down uh, to, to Tessie Bauer. Tessie ha has worked for the two largest uh, companies in the exhibitions industry in the past, both Reed Exhibitions and Informa, and I think prior to that, even some of the German companies, but for a number of years now has been running his own consulting business, MBB Consulting. He's involved in exhibition and, and industry education, as well as all sorts of consulting to the industry. So we have a, a, a sort of a widely experienced top quality panel here this morning who can uh, lead us through the, the, we've been given a pretty sort of broad general topic here, discussing the role of venues and service providers, and that can sort of take us anywhere. But I thought probably we would kick off by, um, and, and just sort of to alert you, Tessie, I'm going to come to you first. So just um, giving everybody else a little bit more thinking time. Um, <laughs> what I'd like to do before we get into the nitty gritty perhaps of the venues and the service provider questions is just set the scene a little bit about where we think we are in terms of uh, the industry and the sort of the key trends we see as the industry reopens in most, if not all, parts of the world and we see events coming back. So what do you think are sort of the key trends which perhaps will impact on, on the local venues and the service providers? I see my can't hear. Suddenly the sound has gone Okay, off. perfect. Uh, Paul, Sorry, thank you very Paul, much the uh, for the question. Off. I hear another voice um, in the- Yeah, Rajan session. has lost the sound and, uh, but um, I guess- yeah, I think he, Rajan, I do think you think he, you could maybe just mute while you sort out your sound issue? Because I think everybody else is okay here. So, um, I have to hear that. I can't hear them. Uh, Rajan, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The joys of live events. Eh? I was yeah. just about to start talking um, that we are when in the process of sorting out our, our technical issues in the industry. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay, maybe. Tessie, why don't you speak? Okay, so um, I just uh, try to speak a little bit louder. Yeah, thanks a lot, uh, Paul, for involving me in this um, great and uh, amazing panel. Um, where we are in the industry specifically from the supplier 
um, side. I think uh, obviously many shows um, around the world are reopening at the moment. Um, I think we are connecting back to our customers um, and um, we have a lot of success stories around the planet where shows are performing very well. I just was talking yesterday um, to um, a, a show team that opened last week and they said they had five times more one-to-one -one meetings uh, at their show than they predicted. So I think there is a massive hunger on all sides to reopen shows and to meet face to face again. And um, that is super encouraging. I think where the industry is and maybe how we move forward and maybe how we change our business model or not, I see two different sides to the story. One side uh, and both sides, interestingly, I think are, are right. So there is no wrong or right. One side is saying, let's get our good old shows uh, back again. People are hungry for that. We want to meet. There's nothing better than face to face. And they're hoping the crisis is just passing. And then we have our good old um, life back again. Um, the other side is saying, no, our business model is changing. So we um, lived through two years um, through digital experiences, um, which we are doing today as well. We are not meeting face to face. I would love to see you all face to face, but it also has its advantages. So we can meet uh, with people from all around the world in a setup, which would not be so easily possible if you would all um, sit in the same room. So our business model is changing. And um, I think it has not decided which side is, is wrong or right. Will our business model change or will we have our good old business model back again? I assume and my prediction is the truth is like always in life somewhere in the middle. Um, there is nothing above face to face and people are hungry. But we would be stupid if we not move over the advantages of digital we have experienced to a new and and not and enhance the old reality into an old reality plus if you if you want to see it and this is a discussion i think um, and the development where our industry at the moment is so not 100 percent clear how the new reality will look like it will look like hopefully by 90 percent like the old reality but we need to we need to put some layers of icing on the cake if you if you want to phrase it like that. Very good. Thank you very much. Elizabeth, what are you hearing from your members in terms of, you know, because many of them around the world are now engaged in, in sort of servicing the fairs which have reopened. So what are you hearing from them about how things are the same, how things have changed at the moment? Yeah. So um, all our members are happy being back to the floor. So this is number one. Uh, number two, I myself, you know, I came back a couple of days ago from uh, Lyon, from the Sierra show, and uh, myself, I could experience the changes that our industry is experimenting. So what I saw on site from a show that originally had in the past 350,000 visitors, uh, I don't know the figures yet, but it was a huge amount of uh, 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 buyers on the floor. Uh, exhibitors were extremely happy, but the, our, let's say, business model changed because it was not only, let's say, uh, the connections between exhibitors and visitors, but at the same time, the event has, for, for the first time, a community app. So it was not only Sierra Leone with all the context with Augusto, and all, it was also Sierra Food, with a new community app, just adding value to the venue, uh, to, to the to the uh, exhibition, with the possibility for exhibitors just to connect, connecting with all overseas visitors that they were not able to join. So I, this is the big change that I experience now in our industry that is going to change the way we serve, which is the two new words in our language now, which is omnichannel. So we have. Uh, our floor side, but also the digital opportunities, connecting people, bringing business together, and multi-touch, which is new context, new content, new experiences. And uh, I think this uh, our, mo our business model is changing from, let's say, we were used to like Sierra two years 
show where the whole industry meets. Now it's a 365, 24-7 service channel for vertical industries. And I think this is how we are going to change. You know, maybe we are still going to have key shows that they, where the whole world meets every two years with maybe national or regional satellites. Uh, then the digital arena with the community app and uh, that we are also going to have shows that we are going to, let's say, lose the battle. And uh, we are also going to have shows that they are going to be regional only. So for our members, this is a new map. And I think uh, uh, we are also moving from volume to trust and quality only. And I think this is going to change the way we work. So that is plenty. Thank you very yeah, thank you very much, Elizabeth. I think that's plenty to, to, to be thinking about there. Joel, I'm not quite sure where you are at in, in, in the Philippines at the moment. Are, are, are shows starting again at the moment or is everything still closed? Where, where are you at there and what are your, what are your thoughts about how, how things will reopen? Well, um, I heard Elizabeth say that their, their members are happy that they're on the floor. I cannot say the same for us here because we're not allowed. So no, no on-ground events are still allowed. So essentially, we just had to deal with going virtual. But I think all around the world, the virtual is not as profitable nor as efficient as uh, physical. So we are making do with virtual. And I think um, along the way, it's going to be a permanent uh, facet of any exhibition in the future, but probably still not uh, the same, this, as big as the physical would be in the future. So we're still hoping. Uh, we would like. I would like to be able to to tell you next time, like Elizabeth, that our members are happy. As of now, we're still sad. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we'll keep our fingers crossed. That the next time we see each other, you're uh, you're back in action that, that, that there in the Philippines as well. Yeah. Um, people, the Indi the industry in India has sort of reopened really just in the last few weeks, I guess, in terms of sort of proper major shows coming back online. Have, have you been able to be on the floor of a trade show in in the you know in the last few weeks since things have uh, restarted in India? Uh, you're on mute, I think, still, people. People, you need to unmute. So, hello, everyone. Yeah. What I would like to say is, yes, the event industry is really opening up in India, and we had a major, major big show, the jewelry show, which happened in Bangalore, which was something around 70,000 square meter of gross area. And there are a lot of shows opening up at Prakriti Madan, Bangalore. So, the, the event industry is opening up, and it is opening up pretty fast. Uh, physically, I was not involved in any of these shows. I did visit the shows as a visitor, but yes, we have confirmed shows happening from October till December. And then we have this art fair show, which is a prestigious show happening in January. So we have even lined up from say around mid October till end of March. So the only apprehension the organizers have as of is so called third wave. So which I personally feel uh, it's a matter of time because with a lot of vaccinations happening in the country. I still believe the third wave is not there. Then it's going to be a good last quarter and as well as the November and December. So we have almost eight confirmed shows with us till March. And half of them are government shows. So government right. is the initiative to bring shows back on the ground. Good. And what, what are you saying in terms of, you know, just the shows that you're preparing for, the ones that you visited? Do they, do they look the same? Do you notice any significant changes since... Um, uh, you know, things have been closed for a year or so now. I mean, have they come back the same? Is it different? What are you feeling? I think it is the initial phase. There was a little bit of apprehension, yes. But the physical shows are going to remain forever because they, have, they are tested with times. They are going to come back for sure. Any virtual show can never replace a physical show. And uh, the major, the, the most important show which I visited of late was a jewelry show happening in uh, Bangalore. It had almost 30,000 square meter of booth area. The halls were packed. And I had a couple of friends who were the participants there. And they were really happy to be a part of a physical show after two years. And then I have a couple of friends in the organizer category. And they are really looking forward to their shows. Because ultimately, everybody wants a show. Uh, organizers, venue owners, service providers for everyone. A physical show has to be there. Uh, the so-called virtual thing is a stopgap thing which cannot uh, continue forever. 
Yes, there was uh, the protocols as per the SOPs laid by the government. Yes, the SOPs were there, and they were properly followed at all the venues. Great, thank you very much, Rajan. I suspect you've been having still a couple of little issues with your sound, but if you can hear us now, we can hear you. Maybe uh, I can't hear you at the moment. I'm not sure if you're on mute on or. Mute. Yeah, he's still on the mute. Yeah, no, no. Great. No, no sound. Can't hear him. No. You, we can't hear you at the moment, Rajan. So uh, I think maybe the microphone is not detected. Yeah. Um, I'm going to. We'll, we'll come back to you in a minute while you solve your <laughs> problem. Sorry about that because I know you've got a Rajan has a number of quite in, in strong and important issues to to to, to share. Um, Elizabeth, perhaps sort of coming back to you as you represent one of the important, your, your association represents one of the important groups of service providers. Given you, you, you outlined for us there a number of things that have changed um, in, in the show that you just visited. Uh, and what are you hearing from your members? I mean, you, 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 you already said that sort of the map of trade shows may well have changed. But what else do you think may have changed in terms of the sorts of companies that you represent and 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 how they're having to um, how, how they're going to have to be working over the next year or two yeah uh, i think that um, there are plenty of changes in the new service proposition i think the shift in our industry are enabling us just to really think different in terms of service and uh, uh, this is uh, really the big, big to do within the value chain because, for example, we can identify as logistics uh, solution providers areas of service that need to be, let's say, served, but uh, we are not alone. We are in the value chain together with organizers, exhibitors, and visitors. And I think this is the new game that we are all playing. For example, you know, if you ask me which kind of services we are they identifying is, for example, imagine we have, a, let's say, a, a community app for a particular show, and we will be able to serve not only exhibitors, but also visitors with logistic solutions. So, uh, and this is, I think, you know, what in, in the way we see a new world of services developing. For example, uh, we could serve as logistic providers, uh, exhibitors and visitors with warehousing solutions. Uh, in the past, we used only to move exhibits from A to B, but maybe we will be able to serve you know, our, our customers, including visitors, in quite another way. I think there is a new world of opportunities that we need to first identify, first see, and in the value chain just to see how we can serve better. And uh, this is really a, a truly exciting moment uh, for all of us. So we start to, we, we need to start seeing first. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. Rajan, do you want to have another? You're still silent at the moment. We can't hear you, I'm afraid. Um, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, Tessie. Can I ask you maybe to sort of address that question, but particularly from the perspective of the venues, because we've been asked here to talk about service providers and venues, and we don't have any venue owning representatives in the uh, in, in on the panel here now. Uh, well, we'll go to Vipul in a minute, but um, to see if you can um, if you can. Maybe people you do own a venue, so uh, <laughs> or or can speak from a venue perspective. But Tessie, anyway, why don't you fire away and just talk a little bit about how some of the how you think some of these trends may impact the venues? Because I think the venue world was already changing before COVID, wasn't it? I mean, some of the sort of received wisdoms of building and developing venues for large business events and trade fairs was already changing, and I just wonder what your thoughts are on what impact this is all happening on having on the venues and, and how we would 
Absolutely. Um, before I um, say something about the venues, um, I want yeah. to shine one very quick light on another aspect to the general question of what will change in the industry specifically for suppliers and also venues. And I think we might move into a phase where we have as an industry maybe a problem and we have a little bit the problem at the moment is in the blind spot um, for our industry. It's um, as we are starting our events again, suppliers are high in demand suddenly. Um, so when you start a show again on a venue, you need suppliers, you need um, people, you need uh, marketing and you need that very, very quickly. So many companies furloughed people and many suppliers have disappeared as well. So we might move now into a phase where we need good suppliers but we will discover they are not they are not fully there anymore so a shortage of suppliers and a shortage of really good people to restart the industry again could be a, a, a proper problem and i talked yesterday about a marketing uh, company who supply marketing services and they said they couldn't have enough marketing people as it's in demand at the moment to, to, to restart the, the show. So I think that is something for our industry really to watch, watch at because many um, innovations also in the industry come from the supplier side. So when the supplier side has partly disappeared, also the innovation powerhouse has partly disappeared. Okay, so I just wanted to say that very quickly because I think that could be a problem for our industry. Coming back to your venue question, Paul, is um, we did an, uh, a research before the crisis, how does the venue of the future need to look like? And uh, people want to have events with much more infotainment and much more excitement um, during the show. People don't uh, differentiate between private life <laughs> and working life so much anymore. People want to be connected and people want to have a good time whilst they are on the venue. Um, and I think that is a big change for every venue is how can I welcome my visitor that he's going to a show, but he's also going to a co-working place. He's going to a connected place. He's going to an entertainment place. Um, he's going to a lifestyle um, place. He can meet all his friends. And I think these are the questions um, which, which venues really have to be answered. At the moment, venues in high demand because shows are reopening and they all want to do the show. They are postponed now at the same time. In a year's time, we will move into a phase when organizers pick their venues more towards um, their KPIs again. And then it will be the time when we have the first wave of shows are over that when you really have to answer, how do I host the next generation of decision makers if they can answer the question then the venue is fit for future if it's just a hall uh, where you can build stands then it might not be enough for the future great thank you very much rajan i know you've been busily working there to try and uh, reconnect yeah, with us. so you you're you're with us we can hear you fire thank away you. so great so the question that i had asked you and then we weren't able to hear your your answer to start with and and uh, what was really what you're seeing as shows now begin to reopen in India and around the world, what you're seeing and what you think might have changed, what might be the same. So let, let's fire off with that and then we can dive on in from there yeah. in a minute in, into the service provider venue stuff. Thank you, Paul, and apologies to everybody. I'm sorry, I come from a country which is IT known for and here I am, I messed up my IT, so apologies. <laughs> uh, Paul, we are living in a different world, a new world, like Elizabeth said, actually, and uh, it's changing every day. Uh, and uh, shows definitely are opening up in India, but like uh, Philippines, uh, shows have still not opened up in Mumbai. Uh, we have shows which have opened up, uh, like Whipple was saying, the jewelry show was a big show, but the other shows which have opened up have scaled down, hugely down. Yes. Hugely, when I say hugely, I mean hugely down. And uh, there is an issue that we have to address here. Uh, we, we have to have, to have uh, hand-holding of the sector. 
when i say hand holding of the sector means we have to hand hold and understand and respect and recognize each other in this time which starts with the exhibitor because if there's no exhibitor there is no show and then it comes to the organizer unfortunately in india uh, the organizers were never ever given a platform to focus their uh, issues and in fact it hit us and i am i first and foremost would like to apologize it's a disgrace on people like me who have been in the industry for decades of raising up and realizing that the organizers have got no say in this country and we woke up during the pandemic when we were felt helpless because there is unlike the west there is no subsidies or any help for the organizers the mid size small size and if there is no organizer we are the foundation of the exhibition industry if we are not there there is no exhibition hall there is no service provider there is nobody the industry is done with as we saw so we have to hand hold the exhibitor who doesn't have the appetite for money at the moment they are coming out of the economy which is which has been ruthless in the past 20 months and uh, obviously then on top of it there is no international travel so when there is no international travel which is the biggest revenue churner for any organizer because in india we have a disparity of rates between international and domestic so that has hit us very hard the third thing is the venues are very uh, in size wise compared to the west we have uh, limited venues in india and they are obviously subsidized by the government and the state so they have the liberty of uh, finance at their hands and unfortunately because of council of uh, indian exhibition organizer which we formed during the this is the council only for organizers by and off and for organizers interest so we went to each and every venue to please help us as and when we open up to you know give subsidy to the organizers to survive because most of them have vanished so we finally got some ref- at least itpo listened to us from 2 and a half percent they have you know increased the discount to 20% till this third quarter and the only other venue which came forward to organize the help was hitex in hyderabad none other even listened the worst part was and is that some of the venues in india have been organizing their own shows at huge discounts so that has hurt the organizers industry very badly so we are trying to put everything together so when i say hand holding i mean as an organizer let's face facts i have to give i have to give a discount to my exhibitor who has been exhibiting it with me for past 20 years and today when the back time is there i have to hand his hold hold his hand and say don't worry i'll give you a discount but you participate same thing i expect for my venues and the service providers for a service provider from a logistic company weight matters for an organizer perspective size matters and from a venue money matters so it's it's a, it's a cycle that we all have to go through so it's a, it's a different world that we are living in and we have to accept that reality and we can only all survive if we hold each other coming back to the fact about virtual and 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 others i think virtual was not a great success in india for at all at all it was basically an add on yes but physical will be physical and it will take time for us to move on and the reflection of the economy of the exhibitions in india today barring one exhibition whatever has opened up thank god we have opened up but the size has dramatically gone down and that reflects the exhibitions appetite to spending money on exhibitions that also reflects on the appetite of the organizer to spend the money end of the day it is the organizer if your show is a success you make money the organizer makes money if it is a failure the organizer loses money but the service provider and the venue still get the money so everything is on the organizer's head so we all need to hold our hands and i don't think we are out of the woods because the third wave okay the vaccination drive is going great in india there is no doubt about it we are one of the best happening but you know the insecurity of it might hit you tomorrow morning never ends that scare is still there it will take time for people to come out of that and the fact that they want to move in i am doing sial in december in delhi and i like i told you paul i've got the next 20 months in my calendar i'm doing a show a month but at the same time can i guarantee you that my shows will be all big i can't can i guarantee you that they will be very successful i can't because we are living in a very insecure unpredictable world but exhibition will stay for the next 100 years for sure but they they can only stay if we stay together that's yeah. most important
Thank you very much, Rajan. I think that uh, that point that you raised at the end there about the uh, the levels of uncertainty that we're going to have to continue to learn to live with is a really critical one, and it has been one that's been very um, um, unnerving and destabilizing for a lot of people in the industry who are very used to being able to say, in two years' time, my show will be here and on those days, and it will be opening, and now suddenly none of us hand on heart can honestly say we're absolutely sure about that. Vipul, we were, we were about to come to you to... Uh, to get your your thoughts on the the impact of all of these trends that we've been discussing on the service providers, companies such as yourselves, and and if you've got thoughts on that, because it looked like you might have uh, on, on the venues as well. So, what thoughts do you have on that? So, we actually own a venue called Gujarat University Exhibition and Convention Center in Ahmedabad, uh, okay. but the problem was it was converted into a COVID center by the government. And yeah. although we have inquiries with us, we don't know when they're going to remove it. Will the government take a call on that particular venue? It is not us. It is it is a COVID hospital. So despite of owning a venue, although we have paid royalties to the government to take the rights for the next 10 years. So out of this two years yeah. have gone. And uh, okay. we are paying that royalty to the government without getting the revenue in return. Mm -hmm. As far as our things from the organizers are concerned, yes, we know they are in a, in a very tight situation. I had a meeting with one of my very reputable organizers last week, and they do a very good international show in India. Now, the pro it's a cash 22 situation. They came to me because we share a very cordial relationship with them. We have worked together to build up the show, and it's going to be one of the best shows in the world at present. So they were requesting me literally to give me a, to give them a discount of 20% on my last agreed date of 2018. And with the input cost going up by 15 to 20 percent in the last one and a half year, which I don't know why it is going up, to give a discount of 20 percent on my last day, that's not possible. And we really want to help them, but then I think we have to find out a way. The help which we can get from our venue, from the, uh, from the event organizer, is number one tariff. Number two, the cash flow is very important because now is the time because I have been paying salaries to my team for the last 18 months without any revenue. So we used to have a very strong backup capital being a very old company. And uh, that, that that backup funds have literally gone now in the last 18 months. So one real help which any service provider would require from uh, your organizer is timely payments. Because once they go to the venue owner, venue owners take the payment in advance. We are the last in the chain. So that is one real help which we will be requiring from, from any event organizer. Yes, definitely we will see what best can be done as far as the rates are concerned. But tariffs and cash flow is, very, is going to be very important here or now. It's going to be very, very difficult to give long, long credits. Yeah, thank you. Joel, when you do eventually, uh, when you are eventually... that Tessie raised is a really important one because, you know, the, the, the venues, of course, will still be there. They've suffered, but the buildings will still be there, and many of them, one way or another, have sort of government support. Uh, hopefully, most of the organizers will be there, but a lot of the service providers are quite small companies, and um, as Tessie said, in many places in the world, they've gone out of business. So, I mean, do you anticipate challenges when you reopen in It's correct that, um, you know, there, there might be a shortage because a lot of companies have either closed, have pivoted or, or have repurposed uh, their, their business into other areas, into other businesses. Um, the organizer is actually, I think, very hurt in what will happen because all of the suppliers, there's an additional cost in uh, getting all of the safety regulations in place. And my fear is that all of this additional cost will be charged to the organizer when we book. At the same token, we cannot increase our rates to our exhibitors. In fact, our exhibitors will probably look for a discount because it, these are uncertain times. So we are hit on both sides, probably increasing supplier prices and diminishing uh, exhibitor prices. Um, we are actually able to sell less space because of the social distancing, the larger aisles. So um, higher cost, lower lower floor area to sell, 
fewer people inside the venue, lower rates in selling it. So as an organizer, you really have to think twice, thrice, four times before you actually launch into a physical event. So that is really a challenge we are facing now. And I think it's global in that concern. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I, I think that's a that's a very good point. I mean, I think not just within our industry, but if you look across all industries at the moment, for a whole variety of reasons, as a result of supply chains being pressured, prices are going up in everything at the moment. I mean, we've seen energy prices, gas prices five times higher, um, mm -hmm. sort of so pressure on all sorts of prices around the world at the moment. Uh, and I think several of you have mentioned, and I'm certainly hearing from a lot of the organizers I talk to, that they have the message I'm hearing from the US, from other parts of Europe, places in the world where events are taking place, is that the buyer. Exhibit is coming back. I mean, maybe large corporations have sort of corporate travel, business travel restrictions in place for whatever reasons. I mean, maybe they, as as as, as Rajan and Vipul both said, maybe they simply just can't afford to exhibit at the moment. And um, um, so that that seems to be the pressure. Although the fairs that are taking place, by and large, we're hearing very positive response from and very good very good reports on on rebooking levels for um, next year. Um, Tessie mentioned the, uh, the the sort of the pressure on, on, on service providers just simply in that either some of those companies don't exist or that many of them have massively okay. reduced their staffing. Um, I mean, Elizabeth, is that something that's happening within your sector? I mean, the logistics companies are a bit different perhaps to the stand contractors and some of the other service providers, which typically are very small family businesses. I mean, you have large multinationals among your members, um, I guess some smaller companies, but perhaps it's, is, is it less of an issue? I mean, are your members who are part of bigger logistics companies, which I guess most of them are, uh, are they less interested in the events industry just because of the uncertainty with it? I mean, do you, you know, are they, are they refocusing on other areas like Joel told us? Mm. Uh, what we did in Ayala, because that, that was a really a, a, commu a, a community experience, what we have done over the past 20 months was uh, what Joel uh, mentioned, repurpose. Uh, we had no shows, so we needed to support uh, first with discussions, the whole membership community, uh, in order to uh, think or rethink the value proposition in times of no shows. And uh, uh, what we did is just to, as Ayela, just to strongly encourage our members to enlarge their businesses during the pandemic and by added services in areas of uh, on-time sensitive cargo. So just to deliver uh, services where we are strong, which is punctuality, accuracy, attention, precision, flexibility in logistics. So, and this is why uh, we, very few of our members have to leave uh, the exhibition world because in the meantime they were, let's say, uh, being active in other areas of sensitive cargo. So we have been very lucky, but we have been working for that. So we have sessions within the associations like Get, Get Future Ready or, or Tailwind where we really created a discussion just to work on this, on repurpose during the no-show, let's say, period. And, but definitely, you know, as you mentioned, all the higher costs in the, let's say, uh, in supply chain hit us a lot. And uh, we are working on seeing, okay, how we can, let's say, go through this uh, uh, new period in order to uh, thrive and also serve better. So it's a, it's a very challenging period, but uh, uh, I think uh, there is uh, a lot to do also in the exhibition world, in the value chain. So this kind of discussion that we are having now will help us all in order just to identify new areas of services that will help us uh, to cope with, for example, the new cost structure. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Now I'm going to ask you all 
to do something really tough, which is we've got slightly less than five minutes now, and there are five of you around the table. So in less than one minute, as your final contribution to our discussion, less than one minute, can you tell us what you most hope, what you would most like to see coming out of all of this in terms of better interactions between organizers, venues, and service providers? Rajan, can I start with you first? I mean, what, what would be your number one hope that comes out of all of this? I think, the, uh, like I said earlier, we need to all work together with each other and understand reality. The ground reality is, like Whipple said, he had, he's got his cash flows problem. So does the organizer and so does the exhibitor. So we have to all understand, appreciate that we are all into this together. Like, for instance, if the venues do not give us discounts today, we at CIO are lo looking at a possibility of opening, having hangers in open spaces and creating a venue there to subsidize and work out on commercials, for which we have already initiated talks with some of the associations here and some stand contractors also. Because we have to survive as an industry to make the exhibitor survive. So yeah. we all have to work together. My, my takeaway will be, it's tough times. In good times, we were together. Let's be together in the tough times. Every, every vertical, be it the service provider, be it the organizer, or be it the venues, we, they have to have their own interest, but let's not, you know, ignore the other over the other. That's the only thing. So we all have to work Perfect. together and things will not change dramatically. Don't expect things to happen overnight. It will take its own no. time. Perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Rajan. Vipul, anything you'd like to add to that in terms of what you'd like to see coming out of this in terms of the different sectors of the industry? You know, as Mr. Rajan said, he said very well, because we are also doing the same thing. We had a couple of meetings with our regular uh, organizers, which we consider to be our friends, because we, they have been with us for the last seven, eight, nine, ten years. And they have been giving us business for many, many, many years now. So they came to us. We were sitting across the table trying to find out a midway where they can do their even the profitability. We do not incur a loss. So we were making discussions. OK, we can reduce the cost here. We can save the cost there. So these are the things we have been working with our regular clients uh, for the last for the last couple of months because they, they already have light up their events coming coming December and January, as I said earlier. And the only way is to sit across the table, be a bit human from both the sides, understand the problem, they understand our problem, and find out a way. Ultimately, the event has to happen. Thank you very much. Thank you, people. Joel, how about you from Manila? What do you, what did, what do you hope comes out of all of this in terms of the interaction between the different segments of the industry? I think if the industry is to survive, we must prioritize confidence building first over profit. We must all work together, tighten our belts so that we can prove to everybody that we can open safely. We can have safe events so that everybody will be willing to go to participate. The profits can come later. First, let's build confidence in the market. Thank I you. think that's very important. Absolutely. Uh, Tessie, any final thoughts from you? Uh, support everything my uh, previous panelists said. For the next year, I really hope we as an industry worldwide really stick together, kickstart the industry because we need to open it. We need to open as soon as possible to stay relevant for our customers. Uh, my second hope is that we um, develop our thinking by um, not offering a single event per year to our customers, but supporting the business journey of our customers. And that means adding value before and after the event by having the event as a main USP of our services. So I really hope we develop our thinking and which role we play in the industry. Thank you very much. Elizabeth, I'm going to give the last word to you. Do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to say from on, on, on this issue? Yes, I, I hope that we learn to understand the non-conception of today. I, I, I wish that together in the value chain, we, we focus on understanding uh, how we can attract the non the, the non uh, the, the non customers of today how to join our industry for example the people that they never attended a show uh, the companies that they never exhibit uh, at, uh, at an exhibition that uh, and that we identify the services that we never dare to offer and this is only possible in the value chain with open conversations so this is a great start.
Wonderful. Thank you very much. I know Tessie mentioned to me before that he felt the sort of the interaction between the organizers and the venues and the service providers was really critical in generating innovation in the industry. And you captured that beautifully in that last comment there, Elizabeth. So we have run exactly out of time and I will therefore draw this to a close and thank Rajan and Vipul in India and good luck with the reopening that's starting. Thank you, Joel, for joining us from Manila and good luck with getting the industry reopened there. And thank you, Elizabeth, for joining us from Dusseldorf and Tessie here in London with me as well. Thanks so much for your time, everybody. We're going to leave the stage now. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And uh, that was a great conversation. Thanks to all the panelists. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paul. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you.